Thank you very much, Paula, for your introduction. All right, uh, firstly, to welcome everybody, 2014, whoever thought we'd all get here. And uh, I know that uh, some of you missed the convention over the last few months, but I, I, there was a lot of catching up done last night, so I hope uh, that all went well. So welcome, firstly, to convention members. But secondly, a very warm welcome to uh, a number of parliamentarians who are here uh, from on the, at the invitation of a WEPA. Uh, these parliamentarians are from Egypt, Libya, Tunisia, Yemen, and there is also a colleague from Bulgaria. Now, AWEPA was formed back in the 1980s. It's an organization, the Association of Western European Parliamentarians with Africa. And its essential motivation in when it was formed was to assist, I suppose, in the struggle against apartheid. And it, it has, over the intervening years, decades and years, played a very important role of building connections between European parliamentarians and African parliamentarians. And about a year ago, when we started our work, we were asked whether there could be, at, at some point in our work, uh, a, a visit from parliamentarians from countries essentially arising from the Arab Spring, and hence the, 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 the presence here of Egyptian, Libyan, Tunisian, and Yemenis colleagues. And the point about this is that all of these countries are going through the early stages of, if you like, state building. They're all of them emerging from dictatorships of one form or another. They're all of them working on writing their own constitutions in which they will try to establish basic principles of democracy, and parliamentary uh, accountability and rights for citizens. So the presence of our friends here is, I think, a moment, a moment of real significance for, for, the, for their countries. And we hope that over the period today and the weekend and some events that they're having uh, in, in over the first couple of days of next week, um, they will really gain from this exposure to the Irish system. And of course, it should be noted that the chairperson of WEPA here in Ireland is one of our very valued members, Maureen O'Sullivan. But if we hope that they will learn from their time here in Ireland, I think it's important perhaps that we learn from them. Because we can perhaps take for granted our parliamentary democracy, our basic system of democracy in this country, which has been established with all its imperfections since the Irish Free State was set up in 1922. So it is, I think as we go through this weekend, let us remember that with all its imperfections, we have in our, within our system something very valuable and something that many other countries in other parts of the world uh, would, would, would long for. So how have we got to today? We are now, in, if you like, in the run in to our conclusion as a convention. We have one more meeting after this weekend. We, and, and this perhaps is particularly relevant for our, our colleagues from, uh, from AWEPA, um, we were given the task of examining eight issues uh, in the Irish Constitution and making recommendations about them. We have completed those a consideration of those, those eight issues and have written reports with recommendations uh, about, the, about them. Three of these reports have been debated in the Dáil, uh, and those three reports covered five of the eight issues. There are a further three reports which have been produced and laid before the houses of the Oireachtas and remain to be debated. And I was very delighted to be asked, uh, as chair, chairman of the convention, uh, to report to Shannon Aaron on our work, and I did that on the 16th of, uh, 16th of January. And then, we, in our terms of reference, we were asked to deal with a ninth issue, essentially any other business, any other matters that the convention would wish to consider over and above the eight we were specifically asked to deal with. 
And we decided to uh, consult widely on this matter. We held nine meetings around the country in October and November. We, th there were something close to 800 submissions from the public about which additional issues we should uh, deal with. And at the end of this consultation of reading the submissions, of listening to people in our visits around the country, we, the convention members voted and voted to deal with two additional issues on top of the eight issues we'd been asked to deal with. And these two issues were Dole reform and whether economic, social, and cultural rights should be enshrined in the Constitution. We're dealing with Dole reform this weekend. We will deal with the other issue, economic, social, and cultural rights, uh, in three weeks' time. There were people, a, a num quite a number of people, who were disappointed that their issues did not make it into the final uh, list for consideration. Uh, and among those the people and groups who were disappointed were people who were concerned about the environment, who wished the environment to be included in the, in the, in the, um, in the Constitution, uh, the issue of the family, aspects of, of the family that they would like uh, changed in the Constitution or, in, or inserted, and the issue of church and state. And we will have a, a, a period at the end of this meeting where we, we will report back to you, if you like, some of uh, about these, if you like, remaining issues which the convention will not have in its current form uh, time to, de to deal with. But for this weekend, we are focused on dull reform. And in a way, I, I, I suspect the reason why convention members may have opted for this as a priority issue uh, over and above the eight is maybe your appetite was somewhat whetted for the, this topic by our two discussions we had in May and June on electoral reform. And it was clear in those discussions that while electoral, the process by which we elect our parliamentary representatives is of crucial importance, in terms of being a representative democracy, it, also, it is only one part of the process by which we are governed. And the other critical part of it is how, once elected, the parliamentarians do their business. And in a way, it, it, that's the essence of what we're dealing with here today. How does, how does the system work? How does the, this 166 people who are elected to be representative of the people, how do they do their work? How do they discharge the basic functions of a parliament, of the Dáil, of passing laws, holding the government to account, and overseeing public expenditure? And we had, uh, for those of us privileged enough to be with at it last night, we had a ma what we call a master class at which uh, Art O'Leary uh, went through uh, a, lo a lot of these things, explained a lot of the technical detail of how the system uh, works. And it was a master class indeed, a master class in communication, and a master, it showed Art's complete mastery of this topic and demonstrated just why he has been <laughs> He has, been, he has been so important to the work of, the, of this convention. Uh, so this is, a, a, this is it's how the system works and how perhaps there are ideas there which could make it work better. And it is very important to, say, to state clearly at the beginning of this weekend that there may be many things how the, about how the system could work without requiring constitutional change. And that will be discussed in, in some of the papers later on, including uh, by the papers, the first uh, two papers from Leah uh, and Moorish. But uh, this, basically this morning, the structure of the weekend, this morning we will be looking and hearing both how our, our system, our Irish system of parliament works in practical terms, uh, but equally, we'll be getting some into, in, insights into how other countries operate their systems of parliamentary democracy. And I think we'll have some very interesting inputs on that. And in the afternoon today, we'll be really focusing, shifting from understanding in the morning how it works to in the afternoon discussing ideas about how it could work better. And we have a particularly important panel, and it should be a very important and interesting panel discussion involving uh, 
former real life practitioners of the arts of politics in the former Taoiseach John Bruton, the former minister Noel Dempsey, as well as the, clerk, the former clerk of the Dáil, Kieran Coughlin, who played a critical role in helping the system work and supporting the system over his career of 21 years as, uh, uh, as clerk of the Dáil. So I think we're in for, a, I think, an engrossing and fascinating weekend. It's enriched all the further by the presence of our friends from the Awapa countries. And I'd like to kick it off by asking Murish, uh, to, uh, who is going to, he, I barely need to introduce you to him because he's been here before. When we discussed uh, the uh, electoral reform, he gave a most, imp a most clear and concise, uh, and I were, uh, of course the cons word concise is important in this context, clear and concise uh, representation of how the system works, and I've no doubt he's going to replicate that now. Murish. 